Dr. Ali McGabel, and we are doing introduction to wireless communications. This is part of the wireless communication course. And uh, I'd like to again to accredit that uh, in this video and coming videos, there might be some work uh, from uh, Professor Andrea Goldsmith and Professor Henk. So uh, the outline for the presentation goes like this. So we'll start by stating what is a wireless communication system. We'll know the difference between wired and wireless. And then we'll give you some history about the timeline of wireless communication or communication in general. Then we'll go into some design challenges uh, for wireless communication, spectrum regulations, and then we'll finish with the standards. Coming videos will cover current and future generation systems. So by the end of this project, this lecture, you must be able to design, describe the main properties and challenges of wireless communication systems. Let's start by looking at what is the difference between wired, which is guided, and wireless, which is unguided. Wired is good for point-to-point -point communication. If you have two points and you want to communicate between them, broadcasting will have limited directivity or directionality like in TV broadcasting. It's not point to point, it's usually point to multi-point. It could be point to point, but it could be also a broadcasting scenario like in TV and radio. Wired interference is not a major issue. There is interference, but it's not a major issue because of being in the wired. Wireless interference and multipath are serious issues. We'll come later on to multipath. Wired systems are open for expansion on a private basis because you have to put the wires and make decisions by your own. <coughs> However, for regulated uh, for wireless systems, it is regulated. So if you want to expand the bandwidth or cover a certain reg uh, region, you have to get uh, regularity approval and uh, you have to respect the regulations. Wireless, wired implementation is costly, slow and involved. Sometimes there is civil work, you have to dig and there is also a right of access However, in wireless, it's easy and fast. Attenuation in wired systems in dB, in logarithmic scale, increases linearly with distance. That's if you double the distance, you expect the, the attenuation, the loss of the signal to double. However, in wireless, it's exponential. It is it's logarithmic, which means with distance, it's not going to be linear. For example, if you double the distance, you get only quarter of of the power in free space. Wired, usually when you speak about mobility, there is limited or no mobility at all because of being connected with the wire. And uh, in wireless, the user can be mobile, but then you have to observe a time varying medium and the Doppler effect and other stuff we'll, we'll cover later on. Which medium to choose? Should we go wired or wireless? You know, the course is about wireless. But we want to make sure that before we continue with the wireless, we know exactly when to go for wireless and otherwise. Uh, it's important to note that the characteristics and medium determine, uh, are determined by uh, the medium and the signal. So the quality will depend on which medium do you choose, wired, wireless, and what exactly type of wired or bandwidth you choose for wireless. For guided, for wired, the medium is more important. However, for unguided, the bandwidth how much bandwidth you have, and the antenna is more important for this case. So there will be some key concerns and data rate and distances are these, um, the key rate are the, the key concerns are data rate and distances. So it depends on how much data rate you want and how much distances. These are things to put in your mind before you go for wired or wireless. Now I think we are ready to define what wireless is. What is a wireless communication system? Uh, if you look at the definition, wireless communication, uh, it is the when the transmit signal is an electromagnetic wave in the frequency band of 10 kilohertz to 300 kilohertz, uh, sorry, to 300 gigahertz. So we will send electromagnetic waves to communicate the information. And the band of frequency we deal with is 10 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz. That's what is meant by wireless communication. Of course, we can go below 10, but it will be the antenna will be not practical, the antenna size, because it's inversely proportional to the frequency. And of course, if you go beyond 300 uh, gigahertz, then you go into infrared, and, uh, and the characteristic will be a bit different. 
Uh, but mainly, uh, mainly we were concerned 300 megahertz to a few uh, gigahertz, let's say 10 gigahertz. But nowadays we are going to even 50 and 60, 70 gigahertz. Now the power and time frequency occupancy of the transmitted signal must be carefully controlled. Power, time, and frequency to avoid disturbing other systems. For the communication history timeline, let's uh, give an idea about how things evolved. So starting with the ancient systems for communication, they, before the modern communication, it used to be wireless using smog signals and carrier pigeons. Now, uh, in, as we develop into the new digital uh, and, and modern communication, we have in 1790s, optical telegraph networks were started with about 20 characters per minute, per minute, not second. Now, in 1830s, electromagnetic telegraph was invented. In 1845, Morse code becomes the telegraph standards where you represent uh, your uh, message or characters by connection, no connection. So that, that was the Morse code. And then in 1851, first submarine telegraph cable, and that's not wireless, that's cable, between London and Paris, that was uh, in 1851. And 1857, mechanical devices push telegraph uh, speeds to about 267 bits per second. To continue with the past, uh, in 1880s, uh, 50,000 telephone lines were established in the United States. 1884, unshielded twisted pair wiring was invented by accident. And 1902, Marconi sends wireless signals across the Atlantic. Now we're back to wireless, about 120 years back. Uh, in 1930s, analog phone network outgrow digital. And this is an important fact. So we started digital, then we went to analog, and now we're going back to digital. So the original start of communication was digital, with Morse code and what have you. And then we went into analog, and we are now getting back into digital. 1957, USA created Advanced Research Project Agency, ARPA, which is the seed for the internet. Optical fiber was first used for, for voice, 1960s. Packet switching invented. We'll explain what packet switching is in coming videos. And then to continue with the past, late 1960s, first designed for ARPANET, uh, four node ARPANET, as we said, it's the start of the internet, was born, 1972, first email message. Ethernet was invented. The protocol for the internet was invented in 1973, approximately uh, 48 years. And then we have the TCP was invented, uh, inter transport control protocol, internet protocol, 1974. Domain name surfaces, where we start to have names for the internet, like www.kfubm.edu.sa. Uh, so that was in 1983. Uh, in the 80s also, we have the first ISP, internet service provider, commercial, where people at home could access. That's about 42 years. Now, speaking of the current, we have seen that there is a growth uh, in the data uh, per year. And this growth, uh, if you look at just the seller subscription, we're speaking about 8 billion uh, as we go with, with uh, time. So uh, it's expected that the number of um, users or of seller system will grow up. Now, uh, 1988 specifically, exponential growth in sellers was observed and the first web browser with hypertext transfer protocol where we have web pages and so on was 1989 first graphical web browser first search engine and then we have uh, most of kbm students were born in this day 2000 most of our audience for the undergraduate course were around this date more or less and then in nine in 2004 uh, Google index was having 8 billion entry and now we're speaking of January 2022 we're having a wireless communication course started and Allah only knows what's going to happen in 20, 2030 where we have our vision so we expect that things are going to improve change increase uh, dramatically in terms of uh, wireless uh, application and usage with this change with this history come new challenges so the network radio challenges include the data rate, how much gigabits per second, how much the data rate we can support with no errors, the energy efficiency, 
can we communicate with the least required energy we have a problem with scarce bifurcated uh, spectrum we have the reliability we want to do something very important operations health and coverage we have heterogeneous networks now we have different networks we have Wi-Fi cellular we have Bluetooth and those heterogeneous networks need to communicate seamless network handoff you go from one location to another and you want you feel not being disconnected all these are the challenges which we want to address in the course uh, one thing that comes with this is the design of uh, integration of the hardware design so this is the management side and this is the hardware design where you want to come up with systems on chip SOC and that of course combine lots of things uh, so we speak about performance complexity size power cost energy and what do you do with high frequencies millimeter wave how do you integrate multiple antennas uh, multi-radio integration and how do these technologies coexist uh, and integrate together so this system level problems or, or challenges create design hardware uh, challenges now uh, speaking of the spectrum the spectrum in Saudi Arabia is regulated by the uh, if uh, the CITC and they have our plan for the spectrum speak starting from very low frequency to very high frequency you can see that the spectrum is really very crowded and we have two types of wireless communication systems we have unlicensed bands we have part of the spectrum where you are where you can use your system where you can use the system without requiring a specific license in general we call it unlicensed bands like the ISM band industrial scientific medical band at 2.4 where we have Bluetooth Wi-Fi and ultra wideband part of the ultra wideband spectrum and we also have licensed band where we have uh, where we have uh, spectrum which requires regulations so quickly some comments about the spectrum regulations like this is like the cellular systems uh, if you look at the spectrum we have very low frequency extremely low frequency very low frequency medium frequencies high frequencies we can divide the spectrum into regions but uh, different mediums cover different spectrums and when we speak of wireless we said we will be concerned up to a few uh, tens of gigahertz and we start from about 10 uh, kilohertz below that it's it's very difficult to have a, a very large uh, antenna size so uh, spectrum is a scarce public resource and hence it has to be allocated we have license and unlicensed band as I mentioned spectrum allocation in Saudi Arabia is done by communications and information technology commission CITC and we have part of our students working there we have uh, very good cooperation with CITC uh, in the US it's controlled by the Federal Communication Commission for commercial application and OSM for defense application FCC in the United States auction spectral blocks so they make auctions similarly things done here in Saudi Arabia by CITC for different part of applications so whoever pays more respecting the regulations will be granted the spectrum some spectrum set aside for universal use and uh, at, at the level of, of the globe and then we have the wired worldwide spectrum controlled by ITU okay in, in the International Telecommunication Union uh, and then we have to understand that the regulation is a necessity it's not that it's just luxury we have to control because we have wireless and we have interference with neighboring countries so we have to arrange for that standards before we go and indulge into the course you need to understand that there are standards it's not just come up with your own design and so you have to respect that standard standards allow interacting systems to to work together so interacting systems require standardization every company wants its own standard uh, want their choice to go but we have to respect the regulations sometimes there is something called de facto standards uh, and something it's known to be a standard by big and strong companies standards determined by CITC in Saudi Arabia standards determined by TIA and CTIA in the US usually we use the IEEE standards in many cases but the process of standardization is not easy because we have conflicts people want different things different opinions and different companies with different interests worldwide standards determined by ITU uh, Inter Inter International Communication Union 
and in Europe it's EC and uh, it's equivalent to IEEE so these are where we come up with the regulations and standards for communication and this is just an example to give you a, a some of the standards therefore for example for wi-fi we'll, we'll come back to the slide later on but just to give you an idea about that there's 802.11b standard for uh, for wi-fi and then this standard was upgraded to 802.11a and g uh, and that is uh, for 5 gigahertz that was for 2.4 gigahertz if you are using wi-fi at home i'm sure you're familiar you can see that, that there is a increase in the speed uh, communication data rate and then we have new technologies including uh, 802.11n, AC, AX to cover different uh, types and different uh, uh, frequency bands, different modulation techniques. The current is what we call the Wi-Fi uh, 6, which is AX. So uh, how, do, how do we agree on the details, what kind of modulation, what kinds of techniques, size antenna bandwidth? This is done through standardization. So many wireless LAN cards have many of these generations and if, if you want to buy a new one make sure that they cover the fastest standard as i said this is just to give an example of standardization in coming videos we're going to cover the current technologies just quick idea and some of the emerging technologies so we'll be touching on 4g wireless systems 6g and what are the challenges there bluetooth satellite systems zigbee and ygig and then we'll uh, also touch on coming videos on emerging technologies including 5G cellulars and 7G Wi-Fi systems, ad hoc, energy harvesting. So please be with us and stay well connected with us and we'll see you inshallah in, 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 in the coming videos. Please leave your comments, suggestions if you have any and then uh, hopefully we'll, we'll address them. Thank you for being good listeners.